Hello, I'm Pastor Ed Knatcher with Refuge Christian Fellowship Church, and we are on the last lesson uh, today on God's River. Uh, this will be part six, and uh, so before we uh, get into the study, let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask that you would bless our time with you. God, will you help us to lay aside all distractions and, and all the things in our hearts and minds that would get in our way uh, God, from hearing from you and receiving from you today. So, Lord, we pray that you would come and have your way in us today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your presence with us and your promise to lead us and guide us in our learning and knowledge of you. We thank you and praise you for this, Lord, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, in our study, we have been looking at the river of God and um, seeing that where it flows, uh, it brings life. And, um, and this has been based out of Ezekiel chapter 40 through 47. And but really focusing on 47 now. And, and so we saw that uh, as the angel of the Lord took uh, Ezekiel into the river, we saw that uh, it was ankle measured and ankle deep, then knee deep, then waist deep, and then it was so deep that it had to be, uh, it could only be swam in. These were, we, we recognize this as points of surrender to the Spirit of God in our lives. And and last week, and then the, the last study we looked at, um, we saw the importance of grasping and understanding that the river brings healing. And it takes what is dead and makes it alive. And, and so we're going to pick up today um, with looking at this a little further because we know that the Bible, not just in Ezekiel, but throughout, uh, the, throughout the prophets and even in the New Testament, um, Jesus spoke of this river of God. But the, so we know the Bible talks about the river of God, and even those waters of God bringing life um, and bringing freedom um, and bringing deliverance and healing. And so um, to all that would come to them, you can see this in Isaiah. Um, and that we see this first Isaiah 35, 7. And he says, and this is a promise of God to the people of Israel. He says, and the burning sand and the mirage shall become a pool. Um, you know, you see pictures in the desert when they were taken. It looks like there's water, a puddle of water there. But, you know, when you get up to it, it's not real. Um, it's just the heat rising off the desert sand makes it look like there's water. But God says, but he's going to change all that. Um, his promise is to, to take those places that are so dry and desolate, listen, and appear as one thing, but are not. They're a disappointment. You know, life has those things in it. We have times and periods in our lives where we go through these deserts and we, we actually live from... Um, um, oasis to oasis, or, or from mirage to mirage, we could say something appears to be what we need, but when we get there, it's not. And and so he says, and the burning sand and the mirage shall become a pool. Um, God will take our disappointments and and actually bring them um, to the manifestation of of being what we really uh, desire and need in our lives. Um, it says, and the thirsty ground springs of water in the haunt of jackals where they lay resting shall be grass and reeds and rushes. Um, you know, water has that ability to do that, even in the most barren land. I saw a special one just, just uh, earlier today um, about a desert outside of Botswana. Um, and and it's, it's the most driest, desolate place, but once a year, the, the floods come from the rains and it just bursts into life, bursts into life. The, the, the animals and the green starts growing and it's just a beautiful thing um, to see. I, I just blew me away meditating on these scriptures and then seeing that even nature reflects this event in a prophetic form to mankind and we're blind to it. Um, and, and it's just so fascinating to see this played out literally in nature and knowing that this will be true one day, even when Jesus reigns here on earth. But you know, it's even true today. You and I could be living in a spiritual desert and God can bring life to it. Amen. His spirit, his Holy Spirit can be that water that brings life to, to you and, and to I. 
So Isaiah 41, 18 says, I will open rivers on the bare heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and dry land springs of water. Again, just a powerful promises of God taking what is dead and making it alive, changing it, literally changing it. And it gives you and I hope in, in things in our lives that look like a desert. They, it, it looks like uh, we have barren heights in our, in our lives, um, you know, in valleys in our lives and things, areas that just seem like they're dead. But, you know, God, God's Holy Spirit can birth life in all those things. And no matter what area of your life, he can birth that life in there. Isaiah 49, 9 says, saying to those who are bound, come forth. And to those who are in darkness, show yourselves, come into the light of the sun of righteousness. They shall feed in all the ways in which they go and their pastures shall be not in deserts, but on the, um, but on all the bare grass covered hills. You know, God promises here. He said an invitation to come out of the desert. It's an invitation to have the river of life um, literally in you and inside of me now in this present day. And there's just a beautiful picture of this here. And we see, we've seen over the past, past several weeks. And um, so we're going to turn to Ezekiel now and, and look at this a little bit more and build on this. And so we're going to be back in Ezekiel 47, 7, and 8. And he says, when I returned, this is after he's measuring the river, which I just uh, spoke of. He says, when I returned there along the bank of the river um, were very many trees on one side and on the other. Um, then he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region. It goes down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And we talked about that last time that the, this water flowing from the temple of the Lord from underneath his throne, flowing eastward to the regions that are dead, to the Dead Sea, it makes it alive. And this is why we pointed out that wherever this river flows, it heals and makes it alive. Um, I believe it's not, a, you know, when I think of Israel and, and I think of the Middle East, I just think of deserts. I think of, of barren land. I, I they just, that's what I think of. But, but to know that the river of God one day will flow and it is going to be an absolutely beautiful, it'll be the most beautiful flourishing place on earth. Um, God can do this. God can take your life, no matter how barren it seems, how long you've lived in that state. He can change your life today through his Holy Spirit and he can birth your life into what is the most beautiful thing it has ever been. And so... We, we see this further as he goes, he says, I'm in Ezekiel 47, 10 and 11. He says, it shall be that fishermen will stand um, by it from Engedah to en en Enaglain. Um, they will be places for the spreading of their nets. And we talked about this last week, um, this area and what these sites represented. Um, it says their fish will be the same kinds as the fish in the great sea exceedingly many right now the dead sea is just dead no life in it but when this river of god flows to it it's going to come alive and it says here in verse 11 but its swamps and marshes will what what well, says they will not be healed now the the dead seed that'll be healed but the rip but the marshes and swamps will not be healed they will be given over to salt in, in this passage says this. So now we know that salt is what makes the, the dead sea dead and puts it in a state where no life can live in it. But the scripture says when the river of God flows, it flows into the dead sea and pushes out the salt. It literally just push, drives it right out and, and the, the dead sea will become living water. Now, all this salt and all this uh, dead water, um, as we, we just describe the Dead Sea as being even today, it's going to be what's going to happen when the water will rise, it'll just overflow, listen, it'll overflow its banks, and all that salt will go into the marshes and into the swamps, and that, that's where it'll be collected, and that, that's where it'll be held. Um, so th this is a really interesting picture, that God will come in with, the, with this river of life and just flow right into the Dead Sea and make it alive again, really, really powerful. 
But again, the swamps and marshes will not be healed because they will be holding, um, given over to the salt. So when you and I think of this, the mar uh, swamps and marshes, we want to uh, consider um, just uh, some analogies out of this, I think are important uh, for you and I to consider. Number one, both a swamp and a marsh are, are basically shallow waters. They're shallow. They're, there's not there's not a lot of depth in the sense of the way it is would be in a, in the major river of life, um, where what where where the water is flowing. Um, but but this is one characteristic is that it is shallow. And I want to say this, you know, it's, it's so important for you and I in our lives not to be shallow. Um, it's it's I think it's important that. The Bible says that as deep calls unto deep, you know, and David describes this in the Psalms as his dealing with the Lord in the book of Psalms. You know, I believe that God calls you and I deeper and deeper into him. Um, we, we should never be satisfied with the depth of our knowledge or intimacy with God. We should always be hungering and thirsting and desiring more depth and more knowledge of our heavenly father. And the Holy Spirit puts that desire in us and then draws us into those deep places with them. And so, there, but the swamps and the marshes uh, represent, number one, these, this is shallow. This is, these are shallow, this is shallow life, shallow living. This is shallow uh, religious beliefs. This is, um, um, it, it's, there's no depth in it in the sense of conviction, of hope, of faith. It's not there. You know, the scripture tells us in the New Testament that we're to sink our roots deep into the, the living hope, you know, uh, in, in, the, in our faith in Christ. And, and so you know, there's a place in our, in our growing in faith where we, we do that. We, we take our, our hope and we just sink it deep in, into the knowledge of God and what we know of him. And our faith grows from this. Um, but a shallow a shallow lifestyle um, is is a lifestyle that may be near the river of God. It could be it could be people who are near what's going on, you know, what God's doing, but it's not happening in them. They they may be they may be around people who God is moving and touching in their lives, but it's not happening in them. Why? Because because they're in the shallows. They they're on the side. They're, they're the swamps and the marshes. They've sunken their roots down somewhere they they should they should not have. Um, you know, there's only one place to plant our roots and it's by the river of God. It's right there with the river so that we can draw from the Holy Spirit, his life giving source. Um, and, and our lives are picturesque of that. Um, this is a really interesting picture and looking at this in an analogy of that way. Number two, not only are swamps and marshes shallow, but they're also stagnant. There's no, there's no flow. Um, there's no flow of the living water into these places. <clears throat> so, you know, th there's a there's a pushing out of the salt when this river flows through into the Dead Sea, but it's, it's what causes the death of the sea. The salt is what is driven out and pushed out and winds up in the swamps and in the marshes. It becomes a, <clears throat> it becomes a holding place of those things. So not only are they shallow, but they're stagnant. There's no, there's nothing new coming in and nothing fresh and alive coming out. I say that again. There's nothing new coming in from the Lord and there's nothing fresh and alive going out to others around us. And so we can become stagnant and, and um, spiritually speaking, this, this is that picture. This is that picture of either a swamp um, or, or a marsh. Now, also, not only are they shallow, not only are they stagnant, but they are they are separated from the river. In other words, there is some kind of buffer. There's some kind of raised piece of land. There, there's some, there's an obstruction there where if the water overflows, then then it pushes a salt in those things. But there's no life giving water flowing into those things. There is a there's something separating these these marshes and these swamps from the river of God. And that's why the waters are stagnant. That's why there's nothing flowing in. Um, again, they are, they are blocked from the river of God. They're not only shallow, 
they're not only stagnant, but there's blockage around these areas so the river can't flow into these places. And you know, it's true. Um, spiritually speaking, you know, people can have things that have blocked their lives up where the Holy Spirit's not moving and flowing in there. And people can be by the river, but but there's a buffer zone there and it, they could be right there next to the river, but there's a buffer zone keeping them from, from drawing from God, keeping, keeping God from flowing into their lives. I, I believe those, those, um, those buffers, those, those blockades, those, whether it's, if you could picture a raised piece of ground or a river banks higher, you know, as the river goes by and keeps the water from flowing over here, whatever it is, there's something that brings division in there from from the life of God. And these are things that we need to watch out for. We need to watch out for living a shallow life. Um, we need to watch out for becoming stagnant. And we need to watch out um, from living a life that's that's literally separated from from God. And and so you know the Bible says that sin, our sin separates us from the Lord. Um, if you've never asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, this is why he came and died on the cross for you. If you've never asked that, you need to go to him, turn from your sin in your heart, sincerely ask him to forgive you because he died on the cross to pay for your sin and for mine. And he was raised again on the third day to show the victory he won for you and I over our sin, over death and over the grave. And, and God wants you to have that hope. He wants you to be a partaker in his river of life as we've been looking at these past few weeks. But there, but there's a separation. Sin, the, um, the scripture says that your sins have, have separated you from God. And, you know, we can have our sins forgiven and removed. In other words, that thing that's causing the division can be taken out of the way. And, there can, and God can flow into your life. He wants to flow into your life. And, and so we see again, we can, we can make the mistake um, and, and these people are in danger, those that live shallow, stagnant, and separated from the life of God. Um, if, you know, also, the, um, you, you also see that the swamp is, is different from a marsh because a swamp has trees, um, but a marsh does not. Okay, the swamp has trees, but the marsh does not. Um, some people, um, you know, find comfort in the fact that, you know, they feel like they, they, they live, they, they go to church Sunday, they live around Christianity, they've got Christian friends, but it really hasn't, um, it really hasn't birthed and happened within them and their personal faith with Jesus. Um, you know, God wants you to have that. And, and so if you, if you feel the Holy Spirit working on your heart about that, you know, if, if, if you and I, you know, if we say, you know, where are we, we're a Christian, we have faith in God, then there should be a conviction of sin. And when, and when God brings that conviction in, however he does it, it's never pleasant. But when he brings it in, there should be this uh, a repentance. There should be a, um, a godly sorrow in within you and I that, that produces repentance where we can turn away from it and flee that sin and get right with Jesus. You know, the, the, the swamp has trees, just like along the river, uh, Ezekiel described trees growing and producing fruit and all this. Well, there's trees in the swamp too, but they're different. Those trees don't produce fruit, you know, and they're not drawing, they're not drawing their substance from the river of God. They're drawing their substance from that, that stagnant dead water. And, you know, God wants you and I to understand we can choose where we draw water from. You can choose where you get your water of life from. You know, you want to you want to get it from God. You don't want to get it from the stagnant pools of this world. You know, and even even if there's trees, even if there's other people you see doing that, um, don't don't you fall for it. You know, or or maybe you feel like you found something in the world where where you know it's something unique and 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 uh, you may not see other people. Um, um, setting their roots and drawing uh, joy in their life, trying to draw joy into their life through, through that particular thing that they may see. But what that is, that's a marsh. You know, marshes don't have trees. They just have the reeds and the, and the, 
and um, and the water and that stagnant water, but but they're both similar, but one doesn't have trees. And you know, it doesn't matter which one that is for us, both are not healed. Both don't find healing, both don't bring life, and and we don't want to be we don't want to be in the marsh. Um, we don't want to deceive ourselves and be live the the marsh life um, where we feel like we're we're um, we're we're embarking on a new thing, um, but really it's just death. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but the the way thereof ends in death. Um, and then we don't want to be uh, live the swamp life, and that is where you know, we got people around us. There's other trees. We're a tree. Picture yourself as a tree in a swamp, and there's other trees, but. But we're, we're drawing our life from those stagnant waters. You know, God doesn't want that either. The, this vision here is the trees planted by the river flowing from God's throne. It brings healing, brings life. And the trees produce fruit in their season. And their leaves are for healing for the nations. There is a benefit, a life-giving benefit resulting in the lives of those planted by the river, the river of God. Um, but again, finally, the two things the swamp and the marsh, as we said at the beginning, that they both are not healed. There is no life. There is no healing and no restoration in those in those ways of life, um, in this in this vision that Ezekiel has. The only way to get healing and to get life is to receive it from the river of God. Both both represent both the marsh and the swamp represent those who are around the river, but are not connected to the river. You know, the Bible relates us to trees. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. It relates us to, I asked this this past Sunday, um, what are some things that the Bible um, relates us to um, symbolically? You know, so we have clay, we have grass, uh, we have salt, we have light. Um, well, this one here is trees, and and uh, we find here the uh, first verse for that is Psalm one three. It says, "And he will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water." This is speaking of the one who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, or stand in the path of sinners, or sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in God's law and in the Word, and in the Word of God he meditates day and night. And then this is where it comes in. And he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yield forth its fruit in its season, just like Ezekiel says. And its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. So God, God is speaking here uh, symbolically to you and I so that we can see that when you and I don't walk in worldly counsel and, and we don't, um, sit in judgment as the world judges others and, and and we don't walk with the world but the scripture says but we meditate on God's word day and night and when we do that then he says you're going to be like this tree by my river that produces fruit its leaf won't wither and whatever you do you'll prosper in it what a what a absolute incredible promise from God absolute incredible and so we, we see this uh, um, example of, use, of comparing us to trees. God uses that example for us to understand. And, um, and then we have in uh, Psalm 92, um, 19 to 15, the righteous man will flourish like the palm tree and he will grow like a cedar in Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord and they will flourish in the courts of our God, yielding fruit in old age. You know, God wants us to see these promises and see how he relates to us being trees because I don't think it's a, a, a coincidence that the river of God described here in Ezekiel has trees planted along the river that are producing fruit in their season and their leaves are for healing for the nations. This is just really a powerful picture of what God promises you and I can be like. You and I can be like this. But you know, if we if we settle for um if we settle just for being religious and we're not worried about having a relationship with jesus then a religious life is just going to be like you're in the swamp or in a marsh 
you know, and, and it's not going to produce anything good in you and I. And, and we'll end up not being healed and have the life eternal that God has for us. Um, you can, like I said before, you and I can choose where, where we get our water from, where, where we draw uh, the, what we're drinking from. And, and you and I can pursue it. God wants us to pursue his living waters in our life. And it's so important that you see this again spoken of in the prophets and then in Jesus' day. You know, he says, uh, you know, he who lives and believes in me out of his innermost being, you know, shall flow rivers of rivers of living water. We said that this we can see this in the past studies where Jesus made this promise. And and he, he wanted us to understand and know that all the prophecies given in the Old Testament could be true literally within us today. These living waters can flow out of us. These living waters can literally remove what is causing something to be dead and bring it to life like the Dead Sea. And with the rivers and the living water of God, there's always hope. There's a living hope. And God wants you and I to have this in our lives as we look at our nation we're praying for our nation we we're praying for our own walk in the lord you know um god listen when the river brings healing um, and brings restoration to places that's what he does within you and i he heals and gives and, and restores what was either destroyed or stolen or lost in our lives he wants to give that back and um, so when we go in and we look at this, it, you know, it's, we need a national and even a personal healing. Um, at this time in our lives, in this, in the, in the time of this, of our existence as a nation, we need this. And, and so this gives us something that we can use in our prayer lives in praying for our nation that, that this, the river of God, spiritually speaking, will flow from the throne of God and into our nation. It'll flow into us, it'll flow around us, out to others, but it is this life-giving river of life from God is what we so desperately need. And there's no way we can we, we can uh, live without it, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, the, the promises that God gives, Isaiah 55, one says, "'Come all you who are thirsty, Come, all you who are thirsty. Now, you know, not everybody is going to hear this, right? He's not talking about a physical thirst, but a spiritual thirsting in your in your heart and soul, um, in who you are, um, in the inner man. There's a thirst there. And we end up spending so much of our life trying to quench that thirst with all kinds of stuff rather than God. But the Lord wants us to know, he says, come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come. Listen, the invitation is for all. The only requirement is that you and I be thirsty. And we are. We, we may not realize it, but we are. And we're thirsty for God and, and, the, and the waters of his Holy Spirit. But we don't even realize it. We're trying to quench our thirst with the things of this world, and it's just not working. And so God wants you to hear this today and, and hear this call to you. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. He says, come, buy the wine and the milk without money and without cost. How do you buy something if you don't have, if you can't pay for it? How do you buy it? You, will you buy it through faith? You receive it through faith. This is what this is how we receive from God. God says, I have this for you. Come and buy it. Well, what do we use to buy it with? We believe it and move on it. If if if, if I'm handing you this Bible and, and I say, Here, come, come and get it, come and buy it. Well, you say I don't have any money. No, come in faith and take it. You buy it by your faith. Your faith is the payment. Did you, did you believe God is true? He's not lying, and this is what he has for you. He has a river of living water, 
waters that you can drink from in your life spiritually and fulfill what you're looking for. This is what the Lord has for you and I. So again, Isaiah 55, 1, Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come and buy and eat. Come buy the wine and the milk without money and without cost. There's an invitation there for you and I to come. And we do it simply by faith, by faith. Listen to Revelation 21, 6 here. It says, he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This is Jesus speaking here, and he, he's declaring it's done, it's finished. And he says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost. Can you hear that? Does your, not, not hear it in your ear, with your ears, but can you hear it in your heart? Can you hear that in your spirit? He's the beginning and the end of everything. And he says, to the thirsty, I give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. This is the promise of God, even in Revelation. This, this comes through Jesus. Faith in Jesus unlocks the spiritual river that flows from under the throne that's established in your heart. It'll flow out of you as you're looking for the return of Jesus one day. And it'll bring life to what's dead around you, even in other people's lives. Listen, this is what God has for you and I, that our spiritual thirst be quenched. And again, how do we buy it? How do we receive it? How should we respond to the Lord when he says, come and buy? Well, we do it through faith. Our faith in the eyes of God is more precious than gold. And listen, if God's inviting you today to respond to him, to respond to him and receive this river of life he has for you. As we get ready to close here in Jeremiah 17, 13, he says, O Lord, the hope of Israel, Listen, he's calling God the hope of Israel. O Lord, the hope of Israel. O Lord, the Lord meaning supreme authority. And that title, Lord, belongs to Jesus. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Your salvation is rest upon the declaration of your faith out of your, your lips. You need to declare that today if you've never done that. Even if you believe it in your heart, but you've never done it, you need to declare today, Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart, God raised him from the dead. Listen, that should be our declaration. Jesus is Lord, meaning he's supreme authority. Listen, it says, O oh Lord, the hope of Israel, or the hope of God's people, you could put that in there like that too, the hope of the Christians, all who forsake thee will be put to shame. All who forsake thee will be put to shame. Those who turn away on earth will be written down because they have forsaken, here it is, the fountain of living water, even the Lord. Listen, God wants you to know he's calling you to the river. He's calling you to, to have within you the river of living water that flows and brings life and healing to all around you. All that is dead can be touched, can be restored, be healed, and, and the dead can be made alive. And all that can come through the Holy Spirit within you and I. There's this beautiful picture, as we've been seeing, a river that will flow in the end times when Jesus reigns on earth. This river will flow from under the temple and flow out to the eastern region, and it'll make the dead sea alive. And as the same today, this river can flow, which is his Holy Spirit, flow out of you and I, and flow to that which is dead, and make it alive. You know, God wants you and I to understand that as a tree planted by the Lord, we can choose where we draw our water from. 
Let's choose today to stop, to stop drawing from the stagnant pools and waters of this world. Let's get what we need from God. There's no, we can't waste time on this anymore. We, you can't, you and I can't be fooling with sin. We can't be, um, we can't be living the stagnant life, the shallow life. We can't be living the separated life. We can't be living this life any longer that, that, that is resulting in a death and not in a life. God wants you and I to be drawing all we need from him in him alone. And this is when we don't walk in the counsel of the world. This is when we meditate on the word of God day and night. Not just read it, but meditate on it. Think about it. Meditate on it. And hear what God is speaking to you today. He wants to talk with you. He wants to pour his spirit into you. He wants to restore you. He wants to heal you. Oh, he wants you to be a source of his life flowing out of you and touching others. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's look at the last verse here. And we want to end on this because this is important. In verse 14 of Jeremiah 17, he ends this and says, Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. You know, he's asking, what he's doing is he's asking for the river to impact him first. Amen. Wherever the river goes, it brings healing. It brings life. You know, and the, and the writer's saying here, he doesn't want to turn from God. He wants to he he wants to be healed, but he wants that he wants that part of his life to be healed. He doesn't want to turn from the Lord. He doesn't want to doubt God, but he wants to go on with the Lord. And we see this here. The 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 writer goes on, the prophet goes on to say, Heal me, O Lord, and I'll be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For thou art my praise. You know, I hope that's your heart tonight. And, uh, you know, if you want the river of God to flow out of you, um, and, and, and to bring life to those who need it around you, to make, to take what is dead and make it alive. Listen, the Lord has that for you. And we remember, we can choose where this, uh, where we draw our water from. We can choose the river of God. I pray that's your choice tonight. I pray that that is your choice today and what God has for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask today that your Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us, Father, into your truth. And God, that you would birth your river in us, Lord. Lord, it is our heart's cry even, to, even today. Lord, heal me and I will be healed. Lord, save me, I will be saved. God, we thank you for being there for us today, no matter where we're at in our lives, no matter what we're facing, uh, what we've been through, no matter what mistakes were made, Lord, no matter what sins that, that, that are there, you, you died to pay for our sin. God, you are here even now as we're praying to forgive. You're here to, to heal. You're here to restore and so, God, we look to you today and remembering your words, come to me, all you are thirsty. Come and buy without cost. Thank you, Lord, for your invitation today. I pray that anyone who needs it will respond to you in faith. Even now, as we pray, help them, Lord, to respond to you in faith in this area of their life. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you all. Have a great week.